Drive about a mile northwest from the village of Calumet and you'll come across a serene location tucked away from sight. This is the resting place of Ruth Ann Miller. On July 16, 1966, seven-year-old Ruth Ann was out picking strawberries with her 10-year-old brother Gary and another boy, nine-year-old Eric England. They came across a barbed wire fence surrounding a concrete slab, slipped through a broken part of the fence, and went in to check it out. And there was a, an erosion below the concrete slab behind me. And Ruth Ann poked her nose in there and thought she would hide from the boys. And she hollered, you can't find me. And when they did locate her, it was too late. She was already slipping down into the shaft. Ruth Ann had fallen into Old Tamarack Number no. 4, a deep copper mine shaft that plunges 4,400 feet deep. Mining operations stopped here in 1931, and in 1936, a concrete plug was installed 1,100 feet below the surface, and a concrete cap was placed over the entrance. There was more than 200 feet of water above the plug. Erosion had caused a hole to open up at the edge of the cap. This is where Ruth Ann was last seen. A massive rescue operation began. I remember this day, the day this uh, Ruth Ann Miller fell down the shaft, like it was yesterday. I was washing my car in the backyard, and when I went to move the car to the front of the yard, the radio was on, and uh, the radio station, there was an announcer, Larry Mackey. He was the radio announcer. He announced where some little girl had fallen down the shaft, a mine shaft, out in the Tamarack location. CNH police came over to my house. I was living on 9th Street and said they probably need equipment. So I came out here with the CNH cop. When I got here, there was a CNH uh, security guy, John Agnich, was here. And uh, John Long, who worked for the gas company, there was a 10 or 12 inch vent pipe coming up out of the concrete slab. And they asked John Long to burn the bolts off of that uh, pipe so they could take that pipe off and see what, if they could look at down through that hole. In the meantime, jackhammers were used to make the hole larger. Then a crane operator was asked to lift the concrete cap off. So they cut it in half, and we had the piece of cement standing up. We locked everything and got out the crane and they said, you can't do it. They said, you have to pick it up. I said, we can't. We're either going to bend the boom, break the cables, something's going to happen. No, they said, you have to pick it up. Well, we tried to pick it up. Part of the concrete slab fell down in a hole. Now that the cap had fallen into the shaft, a bucket was brought in to begin lowering people down to search for any sign of Ruth Ann. Vic Giacoletto and Bill Langdon were the first ones to get in that bucket, and they went down. As, I don't know how far they went down, but they didn't find anything. The uh, blacksmith shop made a cage with a cover on it. I think Pete and I were the first ones going in that bucket, in that uh, new cage. And we were down, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred feet maybe, and a rock hit. And, I mean, it put a good dent in there. And uh, they would go down and hook uh, debris, and they would pull debris up. But uh, it was a tiring task. So they had a small cable, and we were just like on a rubber band, you know, and a cable. And then, well, then they got a bigger cable, and we were okay, you know. But we'd go down, and we'd... Uh, We'd, uh, they'd bring the, the other bucket uh, bucket down beside us and we'd fill it up. Then they'd pull the men up and I would pull the timbers or pipe to get down to the bottom. And the state police were here and they would examine every piece that was brought up a timber to look for a piece of clothing. In the meantime, the Bureau, USB, the Bureau of Mines had been here. They came here right away. And after a while, they said, that's it. They said somebody else is going to get hurt or killed in this, doing this job. And... They shut the project down. You got stuff hanging. You got pipes hanging in there, and you got everything. It was just a mess, you know. And I was scared. I'm not afraid of it. And then uh, when they, when they uh, closed it, I was glad. I was really glad because somebody else was going to get hurt. It was determined that Ruth Ann did not survive the fall into the mine. They figured that she slid into that erosion and fell all the way down to the surface of that water, which was a long ways down. The company set up the site as a memorial to Ruth Ann that same year. Her stepfather has been taking care of it ever since. I've been up here mowing the grass, uh, picking up trash, people vandalized, and I've, I've had to report vandalism 
and done whatever I could to maintain the property. But most people come to remember the little girl who fell into the hole. They come to pay their respects and to see the site. They, a lot of them have never been here before. Quite a few are locals that come back time after time to pay their respects. Ruth Ann's mother, Ruth, had her ashes interred here when she passed away in 1988. When the time comes, her stepfather will join them. I will also be buried here at this location. But what will happen to this memorial when there is no longer someone looking after it? I don't know exactly what will happen. I'm hoping that somebody or someone will take responsibility. I'm 90 years old, like I said earlier. I still maintain the lawn. I cut the grass, trim everything. I spend sometimes a couple of hours up here doing that. But there will come a time when I won't be able to do that. So somebody has to take over. 50 years since the summer of 1966, many of those still alive to remember the three-day rescue attempt gathered together at the site for the first time. We have a lot of the people who were in the rescue operation. I know them all, and they remember me. Ruth Ann need not be forgotten if someone is willing to pick up where Eugene leaves off. I'd like to see an organization take it over and maintain it. Just maintain it over the years. That's just something to remember. Well, I was just out here. I brought my lady friend's daughter out here the other day, about a week ago, and showed her this place. Say a prayer for Ruth that she didn't suffer. For ABC 10 CW5 News, I'm Keweenaw Bureau reporter Rick Allen.